Vitreous is the bane of the existence of every anterior segment surgeon. And that is true when you're doing an operation in which you may expect to encounter it anyway, like complicated cataract surgery. But it is doubly true when you wouldn't expect to encounter vitreous. And specifically, I'm talking about, for example, doing DMEC in an otherwise uncomplicated eye. Vitreous is a miserable thing to encounter in such circumstances because, number one, you're often not anticipating it, so you're unprepared psychologically to deal with it. Number two, because you're not expecting it, you frequently don't have the instrumentation that you need readily at hand to combat it. And number three, even if you did have that instrumentation, because you are not really ready to battle to vitreous at that point, you may not be aware of how it's causing problems during the case. And I want to show you an operation that we performed in our office just a few weeks ago, uh, DMEC in an eye that was supposed to be uncomplicated in which vitreous was a problem. So here is this operation. So this is a patient who has Fuchs dystrophy. They're pseudophagic with an intact posterior capsule, and no history of any problems which would suggest that you would encounter vitreous during this operation. And I'm going to show you exactly when we encountered vitreous during the case and how we started to suspect an issue and how we dealt with that problem. So here we are getting ready to begin the operation. The patient is, is under topical anesthesia, and we're supplementing that, as we frequently do, with a 1 cc injection of a preservative-free lidocaine into the subtenon space. Now, I like 1 cc as the volume to administer in this case because it provides some anesthesia without increasing the posterior pressure. You know, high posterior pressure, especially doing, during DMEC, can cause a shallowing, shallowing of the anterior chamber and make DMEC graft unfolding more difficult. So I like to give some subtenons anesthesia to supplement sort of the comfort of the case, but not so much. So here's one CC being delivered. Now, after that is done, the operation proceeds yeah, basically just like a normal case. We make a few paracentesis, we make a main wound temporally, we use an anterior maintainer, anterior chamber maintainer with air to perform decimetorexis using an inverted Sinsky hook, and we strip the decimase membrane off the back of the cornea and then remove it from the main wound. I'm fast forwarding through all of it because it's completely standard and routine. We clean up a little bit with this mellus scraper to make sure there are no peripheral remnants. And now we'll reform the chamber with balanced salt solution and prepare to make our peripheral iridotomy. I like to do that using this capsulorexis handpiece. It's designed for capsulorexis during cataract surgery, but it makes a really good far peripheral iridotomy. So here I am making a far peripheral iridotomy inferiorly to prevent a pupillary block after the operation. Now, the first indication here that you're going to get problems with vitreous is not seen at this step of the operation, but is suspected on the basis of the patient demographic. And specifically, this is an 85-year-old patient. And elderly patients tend to have already liquefied or cineretic vitreous. And as a result, that vitreous is much more likely to come forward. And even though I'm not observing a problem during the operation at this point, I'm still suspicious, always wary of the possibility of surprise vitreous in these elderly patients with liquefied and thereby mobile vitreous. So here we are now ready to inject the DMEC graft. I'm injecting into the interior chamber. There it goes. And it looks like this should be a very straightforward unfolding operation. I'll remove the air bubble from on top of the graft, as I always do. It looks like now the graft is right side up. It's already basically unfolded. There's just that last little lingering inferior edge that needs to be tapped out. But as I'm tapping it, I notice that it doesn't really seem to want to unfold. And this is already very unusual. This fold should be coming out. And as I tap right on the surface of the cornea, the behavior is so unusual, I start sweeping over here to see if there's vitreous. And I don't see any, but still further taps on the corneal surface are not 
unfolding that edge. And there is no benign explanation for this pattern of folding that you are seeing. As a result, you conclude already immediately there is something wrong, okay? So I'm deepening the chamber and I'm repositioning the graft into a different region of the AC. And I think here that after deepening the chamber and moving the graft, I may be able to unfold the graft in a different part of the eye and avoid whatever that obstacle is inferiorly. So that's what I'm doing. I've flushed the graft over. I've repositioned it sort of superiorly in the eye. And here I am, I'm going to just nudge it a bit more centrally just to facilitate the unfolding that has to be performed. But I'm trying to assiduously avoid the inferior aspect of the anterior chamber because I know that there's something wrong with that part of the eye. So here I have the graft unfolded again. It seems like it's upside down, so I'm going to flip it over to facilitate basically another attempt at unfolding. Okay, so here we have the graft basically, yeah, again flipped over and it's time to try to unfold it here. This is a direct tap with the cannula. People are talk a little bit about a no-touch technique for DMEC graft unfolding. I don't believe in that so much. I mean, if you can unfold the graft without touching it, that's great. But the most important thing is to have it unfolded. And the quicker that can be done, probably the better for the patient and for the graft. So here I have it positioned again. There's this still little inferior edge fold. And I'm going to try to tap it out once again. But it won't go. And you'll notice you can almost see an abnormality in the interface inferiorly, like there's something that is influencing the curvature of that graft. So what do you do? How do you unfold the graft at this point? Well, what you'll notice is I'm lifting the graft up to the back surface of the cornea, I'm elevating it away from what I presume to be vitreous there. And when the graft is lifted up on top of the cornea or against the back of the cornea, then there's room away from the vitreous. And so with further taps on the surface of the eye, you actually can get this little edge of the graft to unfold. So here we are we're just sort of patiently massaging that edge of the graft open and away. And you'll notice just with sort of yeah, patient, diligent efforts there, that edge of the graft can finally be unfolded free from the vitreous, which at this point, I still just presume must be present there, despite actually not seeing any or encountering any when sweeping the cannula in the eye. So at this point, I will try to shuffle the graft over a little bit, but I'm not all that insistent on trying to move it directly into the center of the eye, because I know there's something down there inferiorly that is going to resist me to some extent, and I don't want to bungle the case trying to gild the lily. So at this point, I'm just going to try to inflate the anterior chamber here. And as I do that from this inferior paracentesis, I think you'll notice a couple of things. Number one, the shape of the bubble is abnormal inferiorly. You'll see that there's sort of this meniscus. And number two, as I wipe around down near that paracentesis, you'll see actually a vitreous strand attached to the wex cell sponge. So our suspicions are basically confirmed. There is vitreous in the anterior chamber. And so the way that I manage that is by using an opposing paracentesis and a long cannula to sweep vitreous away from where it is incarcerated here in this paracentesis. So here I am just sweeping the vitreous which still basically is invisible to me aside from the strands that I see on the wex cell sponge away from that incision. So that concludes the operation and I think that the learning points for this case are number one 
to sort of trust the unfolding techniques that you are familiar with. If you're an experienced DMEC surgeon and there's a maneuver or a method for unfolding a DMEC graft and you are applying it and it is not working, you have to basically assume that there's not something wrong with you. It's not that you have forgotten how to do the operation, but there is something weird and different about that eye. And one of the things that is weird and different about an eye that can frustrate invisibly attempts to unfold a graft is surprise vitreous in the anterior chamber. And you can encounter that vitreous in an eye that you would never suspect it would be a problem in. Like, for example, this case, a pseudophagic woman with an intact posterior capsule with Fuchs dystrophy. But the indications are, 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 are but, but you can encounter some of this vitreous more commonly in patients who are elderly, who have more liquefied vitreous, it's more likely to seep up into the anterior chamber. That's certainly one situation in which you may find it. And when you do encounter it, I think that there are strategies for dealing with it. I mean, yes, if you have a vitrector handy, then you can do a vitrectomy. That would have been one good alternative way to combat it in this situation. But an alternative to that, an alternative to taking the graft out of the eye or trying to do an anterior vitrectomy with the graft still in the anterior chamber is just to think, well, how can I manage what must be vitreous present in one part of the anterior chamber? And the way that that can be done is by unfolding the graft in a different part of the eye and by lifting the graft up on an air bubble away from that vitreous such that taps on the surface of the cornea can unfold those lingering inward edges free from that vitreous incarceration. So those are the tips for managing the surprise vitreous. Give it a try if you encounter one of these cases yourself.